Do you know what this is? The interior planes. The interior planes contains a good amount of non-metallic minerals and gas deposits. Some minerals that are in the interior planes include oil, natural gas, coal, potash, copper, zinc, gold, and uranium. They are crucial min minerals for us because we, we Canadians refine or make these resources into other products that all Canadians need on a daily basis. Many of the forest areas that are found in the interior plains are harvested for the wood industry. The resources found in the interior plains are transported across Canada to other regions in Canada. Since most of the interior plains are flat, transportation of goods and services is easily done by trains, pipelines, trucks, and planes. Under the farmland of the southern portion of the western interior plains are mineral resources such as potash and salt as well as oil, natural gas and coal. With the rich soil, the prairie area is perfect for the agriculture industry. Saskatchewan farmers alone grow half of Canada's wheat, while those in Alberta and Manitoba grow the remainder. Other crops are canola, barley, and oats. In the dry areas, land not suitable for crops is used for grazing cattle. Most of the Canada's beef cattle are raised in Alberta. Farmers, al farmers also raise other livestock such as dairy cattle, hogs, and poultry. The mining in the interior plains is important that much that it is a major occupation in there and working in oil and gas industry. It is a major job because it provides people with good paying jobs and good lifestyles and also boosts Canada's economy. Canada is one of the most mining, mining countries and one of the biggest producers of minerals and metals. Exports of aluminum, copper, gold, iron and steel, iron ore, nickel and other minerals found in Canada in general range from $1.7 billion to $15.1 billion each. The Mining Association of Canada is the organization of the Canadian mining industry and according to their statistics, the average weekly pay for a Canadian mining worker in 2010 was $1,632, which was way above the wages of workers in forestry, manufacturing, finance, and construction industries. Forestry and manufacturing are one of the major occupations too, aside mining in the interior plains. The oil and gas were discovered in the interior plains in the 1940s, and in the interior plains there are places that have not been drilled or mined yet. The mining business is also expanding. In CC alone, the amount of workers in 2010 to 2011 went up by more than a thousand people. The interior plains is located in western Canada and the prairies. It is comprised of the provinces of Alberta, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan. It is a vast stretch of land between British Columbia and Ontario. The interior plains were created when soils by rivers and lakes from the Canadian Shields were deposited at its edge. Sedimentary rock was formed horizontally from these deposits, which eventually became large areas of mostly flat, fertile lands, rolling hills, and river valleys. The fossil fuels that make the soil in the interior plains fertile were formed from the decomposed bodies of deceased animals and plant materials. In the 1930s, major dust storms were a result of change in the land, as well as the land became very hot, dry, and dusty. Wind, rain, and river water continue to expose the sedimentary layers that were deposited millions of years ago. Glaciations were one event that helped erratic rocks, lycogases, and grasslands shape the interior plains into a portion of what they are today. An erratic rock is a glacier transported rock fragment from local bedrock. Erratic rocks form from moving glaciers that have carried them from one place to the next, wherever they are now in whatever shape or form, that is where the glacier landed and melted, leaving these often massive rocks behind, sometimes in impossible places. Grasslands are fertile plains that are widely spread out with huge numbers of small temporary wetlands that forms in years with high precipitation. Glaciation flattened the landscape where prairies form now and had left deposits of from inland seas that helped make the fertile soil. Flooding was also another event that helped tagus, muskets, and grasslands form the interior plains. The Horton and Anderson plains form the Arctic slope in the north. The Peel plain that lies southwest of the Mackenzie River has a broad, shallow hollow in which some of the areas have many small lakes and others have none. The Great 
Bear Plain, located around Great Bear Lake, has a rolling surface. In the center of the interior plains, the Alberta Plateau consists of a ring of plateaus that are separated by wide valleys. Fort Nelson and Peace River lowlands occupy more than 50% of the area. The Alberta Plain, south of the Athabasca River, stretches southeastward to the Canada-United States boundary. The Alberta Plateau has more of an even surface, with a few widely separated groups of lowlands, such as Cypress Hills in the south. The Cypress Hills reach an elevation of more than 1,400 meters. The Alberta Plain is more rough and on higher ground than the Saskatchewan Plain. The Saskatchewan Plain is bordered by the Manitoba Escarpment, overlooking the Manitoba Plain. The Manitoba Plain is divided into a line of separated hills from the deep valleys flowing eastward. The interior plains helps in our human development because we are able to use this land for housing, industries, and places for tourism, and much more. Since it is mostly flat, it is much easier to build housing and buildings for us to work and live in. Here's a little fun fact: if you ever go down through this landform region, you will notice most cities are built in the southern region because of the better weather, and also are usually beside a water source, as the climate can be usually dry. The interior plains doesn't only give us an easier place to build shelter and large place to build shelter; it provides jobs for many. You are able to join the oil industry as the interior plains stretches to Alberta, which is where we get most of our oil from. You can join the mining industry as well for any potash minerals, which is one of the world's most important fertilizers. Also, there are many farmlands which grow plentiful foods due to its great soil and livestock. On top of all this, there are great places for tourism, such as the Calgary Stampede, Banff National Park, and Jasper National Park. All of this ties into our economy, which is very essential to a nation. The interior plains does help out a lot with the economy, believe it or not. Because of the great soil and land for farming, we are able to mass produce foods to sell to nations worldwide, as well as livestock. Same with the oil we are able to obtain and sell. The potash we get is sold as well as used either fertilizers or things such as potassium hydroxide that comes from potash and is used to diagnose fungal infections for humans. And since the interior plains is mostly flat, it is much easier to transport goods through and out of the interior plains. All of this is made and sold, and all help our economy. And also, technically, the interior plains also. Boosts our economy because it provides jobs and incomes for many people. Tourism as well affects our economy because of the interior plains has tourist attractions such as Banff National Park, Calgary Stampede, Jasper National Park, and more. It is able to help our economy as well. In conclusion, the interior plains isn't just a large piece of mostly flat land. It helps our economy, provides great tourist attractions, job opportunities, nat- natural resources that are essential in our everyday lives, and large land for housing buildings. All of these great things the interior plains provides us ultimately helps our overall human development in this great landform region. Vegetation, climate, and agriculture in the interior plains. In the interior plains, agriculture is a very important trait. Crops such as wheat, barley, oats, flax, canola, potatoes, corn, and sugar beets are grown. Farmers also raise cattle, pigs, poultry, etc. Both the crops and livestock produced in this area feed many Canadians as well as others around the world. The interior plains has a large variety of animals such as buffalo. Coyote, wolf, deer, bear, eagles, and of course your everyday farming animals: cows, sheep, chicken, etc. The agriculture industry is also connected with promoting the tourism industry. Many rodeos, stampedes, and agriculture shows are held throughout this region for everyone to watch and enjoy. The weather in the interior plains are very severe. Up north, there are long, cold winters, and summers are short and cool. And down south. Summers are long and hot, and winters are cold. However, there is very little precipitation. 
Air from the Gulf of Mexico flows north, colliding into air from Canada, creating sudden and violent weather, such as tornadoes, blizzards, and hailstorms. The climate of the interior plains regions differs throughout the year. Summers can be between 10 degrees and 30 degrees, and winters can be between negative 10 degrees and negative 30 degrees. The interior plains region gets more sunlight each year than any other region in Canada. In addition, the interior plains gets less precipitation than most other regions in Canada. The precipitation in the interior plains is averaged between 300 mm and 500 mm. The driest areas in the southwest get an average of 271 days a year with no precipitation. Just as a climate, there is also much diversity in the vegetation as well for the interior plains. Up north is tundra, which is treeless area where the ground is always frozen. And down south, there are deciduous and evergreen trees. In the prairies, there are tall grasses and even some that could grow to the height of a person.